What's up, you guys? All right, so this is kind of like one of those unscripted, off scripted, unscripted lives that I'm going to be talking about something that's probably going to make people feel some type of way. I was scrolling, of course, on my YouTube, and this video popped up, and it really was um, Matt Walsh. He had did this video maybe like two years ago, and it was um, the title was interesting to me. And, and at first I was going to skip it. I'm not going to lie to you. I was going to skip it because I was like, what does that got to do with anything that I've been watching? Right. And then I was, I was like, mm, you know, that kind of scroll back. Uh, maybe I should click on it, you know, maybe I should click on it. And so I clicked on it and it says, um, the title is, uh, Matt Walsh reacts to benefits of dating a trans woman. And I was like, first of all, when I saw the girl, I was like, I mean, the guy, I was like, that's like, that looks like a girl. Cause I'm going to be honest. He's beautiful. He is. Um, this, but so I was like, well, let me see how old this video is because a lot of what she was saying was kind of what you hear that the men in the red, pill community say um is modern women's problem or women's problem and um she, what she was saying like that they don't give because because she is because he is a trans woman he knows how to cater to a man better than a woman would and so with the way that this individual looks and what they are saying, I would say that like a lot of men in the red pill community probably would find this, um, find him like what they would want to, to be with. So I was like, well, maybe, maybe this person is just saying this because of the red pill community. So I was like, well, let me see how old the, rig the original video is. And then I was like, it was, it was, it's six years old. And so I remember six years ago when they started to do the heavy makeup, you know, like the more drag makeup on regular women. I remember that when you like get your face beat, your face is beat. And I didn't used to wear makeup at that time, but I just found that was weird that, um, that community's makeup or makeup style was becoming um, normal for women. And I remember saying this, I was like, they're doing that so that the trans people, it could be hard to tell between a regular woman and a trans woman. And sure enough, it is very hard to tell the difference because then the wigs came in, the lace front wigs, and you know, I had to keep up with that stuff because I was doing here. And I was like, gosh, these are some more and more things that is going to be hard for a man to tell the difference between a real woman, born woman, and a transgender woman, okay? So mind you, as I'm talking about this, I want to let everybody know, I am don't hate that community. Um, I do not approve of this. Like I've seen something the other today where it was like a trans woman and a trans man got have are having a baby so of course the trans man it was the real woman and so it's a man it's a male and female couple they just dress up like the opposite sex and so i was sitting there so confused why can't you just be yourselves and, and be yourselves because now you got this trans man who's really the woman biologically pregnant and and so like I mean, I just don't understand. I don't understand how people don't see what Satan is doing with this confusion, right? So anyways, um, we're going to watch the video. We're going to watch the video so that she can list the reasons. He can list the reasons why it's more beneficial to date a trans woman than a real woman. And then I want, I hope that this hits the algorithms and the red pill community can sit back and be like, you know, maybe we were duped. So sick. think about this. Six years ago, this individual made this video. K 
Kevin Samuels did not change his content until 2020. I believe the videos prior to 2020, and I may be wrong. I'm sorry if I am. Um, prior to 2020, were more geared to women. 2020, he come, you know, he he hit hit because uh, of that controversial statement. And so, you know, he's pushing, you know, how modern women are combative or all of these things that this trans woman is going to say are the reasons why it's better to date a trans woman than a regular woman. And then I want to remind you that Eve means a worthy... Um, component okay so what that means is like a worthy person to combat with because if you don't have anybody to combat with you won't grow right somebody slightly a little bit different than you so that but have the same goal as you but able to agitate you enough to push you to be better that's the ideal of a man and wife relationship. And so I know like men are like, oh, you know, she harps too much or she's nagging and you take it at that. But why when your friend says something to you that a woman that's your wits tries to say something to you, you take it better when it comes from your friend rather than a woman. Do you get what I'm saying? So because if your friend says, hey, you could do better than that, you know, I did this, you take it as a challenge. And so technically, you guys, you should take, we should take each other's, you know, like, oh, you know, you could do better than that as a challenge rather than it being nagging or being combative or argumentative or whatever. And I think a lot of arguments are really just because somebody's doing something that doesn't seem right. And and sometimes and a lot of things have to do with cheating. To be honest, a lot of things have to do with suspicious behavior that makes somebody think that that, that you're cheating. So let's hop into this video. I'm gonna present um we we'll share the screen. Strong, strong individuals. We've had to endure a lot, you know, within our life, and we've been through a lot, and it just makes us stronger people, and it makes us really sweet. You go through as much as a trans woman who's been like either kicked out of her home or she's been beat up by people by bullies and stuff he's gonna be a very 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 loving caring person because she doesn't want anybody to feel what she's been through you know so she's gonna be super sweet and she's just gonna be a loving person number two for why you should date a trans woman instead i'm just kidding we are more appreciative of the small things we don't need you to, like, you know, go buy us an expensive lunch or, you know, spend a hundred dollars on something for me to be happy. We just want you to, like, hold our hands in public. We just want you to be happy that you're with us. Like, you know, little things like holding our hand in public can make us super happy because, you know, there are people out there that want to hide us. So, you know, we're we're easy to please. We don't we don't have like super unobtainable like standards. Like we do have standards, not gonna I don't wanna make it sound like we don't have standards, but you know, we we are not just like stuck up and like bougie and just wanting the world from you. We just appreciate the small things. Get it where I'm living. <laughs> Number tres. Oh, no, no, no. I want to say that in Spanish. Numero tres. <laughs> Number three for why it is beneficial to date a transgender woman is not all guys want to have kids. Believe it or not. Right now, I'm talking to a guy who doesn't want to have kids. And that's where I actually got this little pointer from. Um, you know, we can't get pregnant, which means we don't have periods either. So a lot of guys don't want kids. There's so much pressure to have a kid when there's a guy and a female, you know, in a relationship. There's like, oh, well, now hurry it up. Like, we want you to get married, have some kids, you know. Not all guys want kids. So, you know, if you don't want kids, 
were the perfect candidate for you. Like at first I was like, hmm, you know, maybe I'm, I'm sad because I want to have my own children too. But you know, whatever, like, you know, I'll, I'll keep my body nice and toned and fit and, you know, keep it stretch mark free. You know, I do have stretch marks on the side of my booty because it's growing. I would say number four would be that we know a man's needs more than your average girl. The reason that being is because we've been on the other side, if you're catching my drift. Number five, hope. I feel like number five is because trans women are more feminine and make more of an effort. The reason that being is, is because we're making up for what we for what we lacked in our previous life. And, you know, we care about our appearance and we just want to look spruced up and feminine at all times. Guys love that. Guys appreciate it. I heard from a few guys that I've dated, like, you know what, like, I really appreciate trans women because they actually take the time to get ready and don't take advantage of being a woman. Oh my God, this hair is getting on my nerves right here. You guys actually like take the time and effort to be feminine and to be girly and you guys aren't trying to like step all over our toes all the time feminism nowadays i swear guys are like well you know girls want to be a girl but want to act like a dude it's like you can't be chilling over there with the dudes and trying to act like a dude but expect him to treat you like a woman no honey that's just not how it works so sorry to break it to you it's not how it works my hair is just not agreeing with me today we're just gonna Okay, bitch. You need to stay. There we go. I just want to. I just want to do that face right there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. It sounds like an agenda to me. It sounds like this has been agenda the whole time to me. And maybe people just didn't realize that they were pushing it, but it sounds like it's an agenda to me. And like watching that video kind of made me feel some type of way because look at what number five was. And, and here's the part that just really bothers me. I remember telling somebody, you know, Kevin Samuels was supposed is supposed to be talking about or talking for six figure men. I said, but regular men are going to flock to him and adopt his ideology and then they're going to be very mean and very ugly and very rude. And in our black community, we already had a problem with black men saying that they didn't want black women after they've beat them up, impregnated them, used them, abused them, and they wanted to be with white women. And so Kevin Samuels, so, so mind you that we have been already being rejected and, and told that another race was better than us. I just want to make sure that I say that because I feel like people forgot that error, that, that, that time that that was happening before Kevin Samuels really jumped on the scene and then gave black men another reason or several reasons to hate black women. Like even down to hating the black women that did raise them um, as a single mom because, you know, Kevin had to deal with a single mom, right? And he, oh, I say deal, but he, he had a single mom that had to raise him. And and then, you know, the way he spoke about her would be like, not good. So I don't know what that single mom did to him. But then you, the truth is Kevin went through a lot. And he was not healed. He wasn't healed. He had a lot of church hurt too, because he even said it. He had a lot of hurt. Like I, I honestly believe that he will be what he would consider uh, a simp, or but he was a simp to the wrong type of woman, and that is what how that's how Satan does. And I, I, I 
feel like if if we would just understand the tactics of the enemy, then the enemy wouldn't be able to use that trauma to then elevate somebody to create a space of more traumatic experiences for everyone. So I think what I see a lot of times when people are arguing back and forth, like with somebody that's from the red pill community to, you know, a woman that has, has made a choice to, I guess, be considered a modern woman per a Kevin Stamuel's definition of one, right? Um, and then she'll say something like, you, you don't like women. You just can't, you just don't like women. And, um, what she said on number five was basically the same thing. I'm just, I just kind of wanted to play that because it's a six year old video. And if you can look at the rise of even more disdain and, and hate within the black community, community between men and women, there are three things that I saw. The rise of drag, makeup, and hair around six years ago. And then on top of men wanting to go outside uh, their race because they didn't want to deal with Black women anymore. Uh, and then... And then the Kevin Samuels era coming in and, and, and just, you know, it's spilling over from it being for six figure men to, for being, you know, for being for regular men. And we went from having already a divide. <clears throat> and so let me back up a little bit. Let me back up. I'm back up. Because I think people forget this too. People are like, why did Sexy Red get created? Well, I remember, I remember when black men, and I don't care who gets mad because I remember this, would say that they did not want to be with black women because they were not freaky enough and they were not as fun as other races and wouldn't let... Um, black men do what other races would allow them to do. And so slowly I started to see women, um, you know, where it came to um, two live crew, right? Um, uh, juvenile, right? And um, I'm missing somebody. I'm missing somebody that's real important in this um situation, Snoop Dogg and everything like that, where they begin to show black women in an over-sexualized, very over-sexualized light, right? Where they're doing now nasty freaking thing, freaky things, kissing other women, all that stuff. And do you know why women begin to do that? Because they wanted the attention of black men. So they figured that if they did these things or appease to you all, right, with these things, so you would stop going over there to other women. So what happened is you continued to go over there to other women, but you were started messing with us again, but then now is a triangulation situation and there's cheating involved and all that because now you don't respect us or I'm saying us, but I'm just saying you don't respect black women that, that do that. And so then you still had those girls that wanted to maintain some type of de decorum uh, or some type of standard. But then you, you have no nobody really teaching men how to be men, you know, as as far as like being disciplined and not, you know, having multiple sex partners and how to be an actual husband. That was not something I don't feel. And I don't remember even seeing really being taught to be completely honest. And, and I may be wrong, but you can see the fruits of that right now. I just want I just wanted to point out that I know exactly when you know 
Like, okay, is it, I even remember there being a slogan saying hoes is winning. I remember that. I remember that. And I was like, yeah, I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, I don't even think that's cute. And I, I just didn't think it was cute. It's not, hoes shouldn't be winning. Why would hoes be winning? I never even understood that when that became a thing. Um, then, you know, music changed. Even r and music changed. And, you know, it was no longer a man talking about being in love or anything like that. So you have to understand there was just so many key appointments. Everybody always wants to talk about the feminist movement, but it was so mo- it was so much more than that. Don't forget the porn movement. Let's just start about that. Let's talk about the institution of porn into society and why our men, our black men especially, started wanting other races. Let's not, let's talk about porn. Everybody wants to talk about feminist movement, but let's talk about porn. You understand what I'm saying? Because porn has ruined just relationships in general and people in general. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about all of the secrets of, you know, incest and sexual perversion and molestation and those things that have affected the mental health of people. And therefore they become no more victims, but vict- I mean, victimizers, like they create, they become the villain with no help to know that what they're doing is wrong. But let's go back to porn. You know, nobody, everybody wants to say the feminist movement was a problem, but let's talk about porn. Let's talk about how, even with the feminist movement being a part of the problem, nobody wants to point out the porn industry and that being a huge problem. That's it. That's all I got to say. Because now you see there is a woman who's not a real woman saying that she's better than a woman. And, and what I hated about Kevin Samuel is he'd be like, well, what do you bring to the table? And if somebody would list, okay, well, I can cook, I can clean, I can um, I can help him with this, I can do that, I can do all of these things, right? He would say, that a man doesn't care about that. We don't care about that. Well, what do you what what do you care about? What is it that you are wanting somebody to say? So now when somebody says, what do you bring to the table in any conversation? A woman is reluctant to even answer the question because she doesn't know what the right answer is anymore. Because I seen where somebody would answer it and then they would get so so now you see a pretty woman who probably doesn't have all of those traits. And so you ask her, what do you bring to the table? And she you can't answer that. But really technically, that's what y'all want. You want somebody who can't answer that because at the end of the day, if there's a woman with a bunch of credentials, a bunch of things that she, she, you had, she came into your life and your life changed and, and it elevated and, um, she taught you things and, and she is educated and she owns her stuff. That don't matter to you. Right. But she brought you peace too. She even, she even helps you with that. And that still isn't good enough. So what is it that you want? So, and so then he goes and he tells, he critiques women based on their looks. So it has to do with looks only. So beauty is the only currency that a woman has. But I, I think he said something of that nature. I think he said that beauty is the only currency that a woman has. So if you're 38 and because I'm 38. So if you're 30, getting ready to be 40, you're doomed. If you have a kid and you've never been married, you're doomed. You know, like all of these things, even though you would be honest, it was my choice to raise my kid on my own. It was also my choice not to have a man to uh, try to take over the role of the father because that's, I thought, you know what I'm saying, in my mind that that wasn't fair because that's not his kid. So I didn't want to put that burden on somebody else. And so this what's funny is um, there's women out here like me who thought about everybody in the situation and therefore, you know, took the consequences of their actions. And then you have a man who has now led a whole bunch of men to believe that just based on my age and that I have one kid, 
right? And that I decided not to be with or marry the father of my child, that I am a, not a good candidate, even though everything was a choice to make sure that somebody else didn't suffer for my consequences, for my actions, right? Everything that I decided to do was so that somebody did not have to suffer um, because of my actions. This is before even Kevin Samuels that I just went ahead and calculated like, that's not fair. That's not fair. And that's not fair. And so that's, that's, that's funny to me because what you're saying is I'm undeserving of love, but a man could have 150 to 200 partners plus, right? He could have a slew of women whose lives that he has ruined. He could probably have a couple baby mamas and, and you're going to tell me that I need to lower my standards and accept that um, because he's valuable, And so you don't see that these things are created to divide Black people. Now, I'm not saying for people to have unrealistic standards, and I'm not saying for people to not pick or want somebody that they are themselves. But what I'm saying is that sometimes right now, it's going to come with somebody having a kid. It's going to have come with somebody being a little bit older, if that is going to come with somebody that has been through some things. But the whole point is when you meet somebody that's been through some things and you've been through them through some things, the both of y'all should sit down and say, you know what, we've been through a lot. And I, 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 I don't want to do what I've done in my past with you. I want something different. That's what should happen because your experiences should not um, cost you the opportunity of true love. That's not fair. I think that's weird. I think that that's weird. I think it's weird. So when someone somebody gets mad and they say y'all just want men, well, they might because per that trans woman who is actually a man, she says she's a better fit. And if you saw her on the street, I wouldn't know that she wasn't a man. She wasn't a woman. But I think that Satan is setting up men to accept that as a partner because everything that makes a woman a woman, really, everything that make God made us for to be to you um, is now a problem. I want you to think about that. Everything that God made us to be to a man is now considered a red flag and a problem. Forget the way sexy red looks. Forget all of that stuff. I'm talking about the list of things that makes a woman valuable to a man is now considered a problem. The setup is real. And um, I'm glad I saw that video. I'm glad I saw that video because this video needs to be made. I pray and I hope that the delusion, that the deception, that the confusion really helps you guys. And I think what I'm going to do is um, do a video discussing the effects of the porn industry on um, men, on men. And the reason I'm going to do that is because porn opens you up to a lot of things. But it also brings apart shame and aggression. And because you're shamed, ashamed of what you're doing behind closed doors, because somewhere subconsciously you know that it's wrong, right? You then become aggressive, but you also spiritually begin to make soul ties and stuff with demonic spirits because that is what is operating on that screen, that is what's really operating. And so you create these fantasies, but you're also looking at somebody else having sex. And so you don't even, you don't even realize it, but then you try to reenact those things in real life. There's something that um, uh, Mr. Peer Peterson or something like that was saying, he said, and I wanna make sure I quote this right, 
He said the reason why depression and anxiety went up in America, um, especially with teens, is because they stopped living life so that they could watch other people live their life. So they've been, they're stuck to the phone watching people live life, but they're not living their own lives. And so they become depressed because you're watching somebody else do something that you should be able to do if you were out in the world, if you would have known the value of marriage, um, if you would have known to be courting at a young age and getting finding your spouse so that you can do these things without having to watch somebody do them. So now you have kids who are watching reality TV shows and reality things, and they are becoming depressed and anxiety and having high anxiety because they don't know how to interact with one another, and they don't know how to live life outside of watching somebody else live theirs. Because I don't remember watching all that stuff when I was younger. I was outside. We was outside living life. We was outside looking a hot mess. We was outside walking everywhere. We was outside. Do you hear me? We were outside. Now, there's some things that we did that were not appropriate. Things that, you know, I don't even know why our minds start to do those things. Um, But for the most part, we were outside. We were outside. We were not inside. And so I just pray, I really do. I pray that this video hits the algorithm. I hope that it does make you think a little bit. And I hope that listening to that person, that man say that, lets you know that this might've been an agenda. This might've been an agenda. And then I want you to think about this too. A lot of black men go to jail, they go to prison and they get turned out. And I don't care what nobody says, they do. They get turned out. Um, and they come out here and they're confused too. And, and now you have these individuals who look more like a woman and it's just a lot of confusion, you guys. And I really need us to understand that this type of sin is the sin that caused God to burn Sodom and Gomorrah. It caused um, God to flood the entire earth when this sin this type of sin fully manifests and begins begins to run rampant. There's a level of aggression that comes with it because if you remember in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were willing to tear the door down to get to the angels that had come to Lot's house. They said that they didn't want, he Lot said, I can give you my daughters. And they said, we don't want that. We want the men that we saw that just walked in your house. And these were men outside the door of Lot's house saying that they wanted to have their way with other men that were inside of Lot's house because they had never seen these men before and they wanted them. I want you to understand that. So the, the perversion the spirit of perversion, this spirit, this spirit that is, um, and I would say Baphomet, this Baphomet spirit that is in this, because and Baphomet is an androgynous creature. Remember, it has boobs, has long hair, but it has a beard, has the face of a man. You know what I'm saying? You have to think about this, right? Because Baphomet is over in Hollywood, and that's why Hollywood is getting turned upside down right now, because God is trying to expose what the origins or who, what principality is over it so that y'all can, you know, make a choice today who you're going to serve. So I said, there's no gray area, y'all. It is no gray area. I promise you, you got to pick a side, pick either darkness or light. I promise you it's getting real bad out here because the Bible says that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the son of man comes. And I just want you to know that it's going to get worse. 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 But we do, if you choose Jesus, you have everlasting life after this. It's going to get worse though. It's going to get worse. Um, So what I'm saying is like, and that's why I think why I get upset with a bunch of conversation because the Bible clearly says that it's, it's going to get worse. The whole thing is like, we need to get our homes in order. We need to get ourselves in order. And if we get our homes in order, ourselves in order, it will start to, you know, flow out into society as much as it can. You know, who God needs to be saved before all of this hits the fan is who needs to be sealed, right? We need to know that. Um, that's it. I'll have to say. So yeah, I want to talk about porn and I kind of want to talk about these things before I get onto um, arrested development. 
I think that these kind of like things would kind of help because once I start getting into arrested development, we're about to go deep, right? So I just want to talk about some things that are a big problem. You know, porn is definitely a problem. We blame feminists. We blame uh, single mothers. We blame uh, the food stamps. We blame everything, but we have yet to talk about the porn industry and what effect it had on society. Really, really bad. It's really bad effect. So anyways, you guys, I hope you have a good evening. Thank you for your time. And I hope that that was kind of educational. Talk to you later.